make of the current Chinese earnings season? So the, the Chinese earnings season um, has come through with a, a couple of clear trends in place. Uh, for the banks, we've seen strong fee income, uh, but I wouldn't extrapolate that forward because we're beginning to see a decline in the pace of growth of shadow banking. Uh, but those stocks are trading on low valuations, so we think that's already priced in. Uh, we've seen uh, significant weakness in the earnings for uh, the deep cyclicals, such as uh, uh, metal stocks, um, engineering. Uh, but we've seen some good numbers out of consumer staples, particularly some of the snack food companies, and also the dairies. So there's a sort of mixed picture there. Some of the auto stocks have done well, particularly those that are producing uh, SUVs. Uh, so what we find intriguing in China is the detail. Uh, it's the trends that we're seeing at a, at a sub-industry level that are providing the opportunities uh, rather than sort of making a broader statement on the Chinese economy based upon the earnings numbers. What are your views on the recent concerns about China's pork prices inflation? Yes, I think there are, there are possibly a number of drivers to headline CPI, uh, and you highlighted uh, specifically uh, pork prices. Um, I would, though, you know, highlight a few other things that, um, you know, when we look at the uh, utilities, the utilities have seen a reduction in coal price. Uh, hydro dams are relatively full, so we don't see any pressure in terms of utility tariffs, so the inflationary issues will predominantly be food driving the number. But it's also worth remembering that wage inflation in China uh, is still reasonably high and property prices have been going up. So some of the drivers of core inflation are continuing to put pressure on companies' margins. If we look at inflation from the perspective of heavy industry, PPI, the producer's price index, has been down for 16 months in a row. This is the longest period of deflation we've seen in PPI since 2000. And that ultimately is a very bad story for heavy industry margins. Looking at the troubles facing TEPCO and the rise in power prices on the back of increased fossil fuel reliance, how crucial will be power reform to maintaining Japan's economic recovery? I think it's very important. It is, though, uh, critical to understand the Japanese perception of this. If you speak to Japanese businesses, uh, Japanese investors, their base assumption is a meaningful rise in electricity tariffs over the next couple of years. There is a chance for a positive surprise on that. Maybe the positive surprise in terms of restarting nuclear power plants is less. But as Japan enters into longer-term contracts, uses more gas, uh, then some of the pressure they experience when they were trying to buy oil in the spot market will ease. Thermal coal prices have also been weakening. Uh, so I, I'm not sure if it's such a significant issue, uh, but back to sort of discussion we we're having earlier about higher oil. Uh, if the nuclear power plants aren't restarted as we go into the winter months, you're probably talking about um, 250,000 barrels of oil equivalent uh, extra being required by Japan. You know, and that's a meaningful demand shock for the global oil market. There are companies who are more reliant on a weak yen than others. Toyota versus Honda, for example. Given where the yen is now, is it time to double down on those firms that benefit most from a weaker yen? Or is this a buying opportunity, while the yen is high, to get in on firms with more ex-Japan currency exposure? I, t I think it's, it is worthwhile uh, positioning yourself for a weaker yen. Uh, the yen more recently um, has been bid up as uh, stresses have uh, increased in terms of global bond markets, uh, fears over Syria. Uh, we think the yen will weaken back towards a hundred level. So being long yen weakness beneficiaries makes sense.